Hey, what's up guys? This is Jeff with Game Stork and it's time for some Nintendo Game Stork daily news update. This is awesome. Lots of great news, some really good games coming out this month I'm looking forward to. Uh, but let's look at what's most current in the news and what's closest coming up. Game Stork, delivering news, reviews, and playthroughs like a newborn baby. Well, first and foremost, I typically don't do these inventory updates, but if you are looking for a Nintendo Switch and you haven't been very lucky, it looks like GameStop is going to have a shipment of uh, just regular Nintendo Switches. Now, these will not be in bundles, and this is a good, you know, good news for those of you who have been waiting and didn't want to buy a bundle for four or five hundred dollars that have things that you probably would buy anyway. Uh, but obviously, the bundle started for four nineteen. 99 and you can get the system on its own for 299 so if you're looking for this system hit GameStop up tomorrow your local GameStop uh, on August the 15th and see what they got because they should be getting in a new shipment of Nintendo switches something else that's really cool in the news is the fact that on a Japanese site they've decided to that the Nintendo company obviously has decided to start doing pre-orders for Japan through the internet due to the high demand now the cool thing about this is that you actually get to go on and customize the colors of your joy cons which means if you're like me and you like the colors of your joy con to match sometimes you know uh, and you don't want to go buy a second set just to have one matching one for another one which is you know 80 bucks twice 160 dollars for two sets to have matching draw cons uh yeah you know that's kind of tough sometimes but you actually get to get on pick the colors you want even if you want to mix mix max you can do that uh and it's really neat uh this is something i would love to see here um to, for us to be able to do just to buy joy cons for that too not just for the system i wish nintendo would do that there are places online that offer these but the cost of customization is kind of high, and you wind up paying about $120 for the set of Joy-Cons instead of $80. Now, understand if you're looking at a professionally done job of customization, something that looks like it comes from a company, eh, yeah, I get it, that they do need to get paid, and they have to uh, you know, purchase the things, the paint and things like that, the finish to do this, and also labor. I get it, but I would like to just see you know, the color Joy-Cons that I would like to have for $80. Bucks. But this site is really cool. I'm very excited about it. And you know what? I'm excited about it because of the possibility of it coming here. Uh, the possibility of them doing what Xbox did with their controllers and making them fully customizable and you can order them. Man, I will order so many sets of Joy-Cons if I can customize these things and really just dress them up. You know, really cool like I want them. Theme them after my favorite games, my favorite teams and sports, and a whole bunch of other things. And that's really exciting. Now, for those of you who are waiting for some really good games to play, there are some coming out this month. But I do have something that's really great news for you Batman fans out there. And this isn't coming this month, but the pre-orders have officially opened. And uh, you can now pre-order the Batman The Telltale series for the Nintendo Switch. It's in GameStop system online, and it is available to pre-order. And this saga has been going on for quite some time, and this is just awesome yeah and apparently to correct this you have to go inside of the store it's not on their website so you have to go in the store and pre-order inside of the store and this set, this game is set to release at forty dollars according to their system on october the third so that's at the beginning of october which is mario month and that's really cool it's really exciting to me and uh, i'm hoping that this game runs really good i'm hoping that it's great uh, just a great overall game i've yet to get around to playing this one but i do love batman i love dc and marvel i'm more of a marvel guy let's just be honest uh, but i do love dc as well and i do like batman uh, so i'm looking forward to seeing what this game has to offer telltale does a wonderful job with their games and I'm sure that this is going to be one uh, that would make a great addition to the library on the Nintendo Switch. So it looks like Unepic is uh, heading to the Nintendo Switch, also Ghost. And this is a pretty cool game. At this point, I, I can't lie to you, I don't know a whole bunch about this outside of the title. Uh, and once I do, I might include this in the next video. But I just wanted to put this in here saying that it is coming. Uh, you can look this up and check it out. Uh, and it seems to be a pretty cool indie game. Well, it looks like Sony's Jim Ryan thinks that it's really great to see Nintendo doing well again. I guess they're okay with this. 
because the idea that Sony has um, is that Nintendo is a supplemental system and that it can't do what the PS4 and the PS4 Pro can do. So it offers something different. So it's not necessarily a threat to their success. And uh, you can't say that the Switch isn't doing well. I still see people online who are complete idiots, let's just face it, who say the Nintendo Switch is going to die, it's going to fail, it's going to be terrible. And I'm like, hey bro, <laughs> you know, the financial results that came out in July for the first quarter, in just one quarter, selling 4.7 million units, that's amazing. And uh, this is, you know, just, if you looked at that, multiply that times four, you get what I'm saying? That's, well, that's up around 18 million units, roughly. So, this is going to be a really interesting year, and if this, if this pace keeps going, then by the end of the first year, the Wii U, they're going to like zoom past the sales of the lifetime Wii U sales. And um, this is just great. Having a big install base and a user base means more games for us. And it's really cool. But to look at Ryan's words here, it says it's still very early. Many things Nintendo does are so disruptive and different that it takes quite a bit of time to understand them. And I don't think we're at the same stage yet like with Switch. Like I say, it's great that they're back. It's great to see them doing so well. And he also went on to say he, he believes that a resurgent Nintendo is just great for the industry on so many levels. And I agree. Uh, Nintendo typically goes out and they do their thing and they do it well. Uh, now, they have ha hit some stumbling blocks with the Wii U and attempting to... I, I guess you would say it was advertising, honestly, that killed it because the message of the Wii U wasn't there. Uh, a lot of people thought that it was an addition to the uh, Nintendo Wii. Uh, I know gamers who thought that this was just a peripheral for the Nintendo Wii, and they, that's what they thought, and it's just not true. But in this case, it seems like, you know, that, hey, a lot of people in the industry are recognizing Nintendo's doing very well. Uh, we should all be recognizing that they're doing very well, and the more people who purchase consoles, you know, the more likely we are to see a lot of big third-party support and things like that. So if you're waiting on Rhyme for the Nintendo Switch, uh, Cody Bradley discusses Rhyme. He, he went and did an interview. Well, I say an interview. He posted in response on their website. So on the game's website, he did post a letter saying what's been going on and how the Switch SKU didn't exist and they started this game after August of 2016. So it took a, a long time to wrap up the development they already had on the other systems. Things, you know, as far as quality standards, the uh, things that they guessed on or, you know, gave a good guesstimation as to how it would run on the Switch. They said it didn't quite match up and they had to make a lot of adjustments. Uh, but it, it is set coming out very soon. You know, it's one of those games, you know, this system is different and every new console is different and this one doesn't run on the same architecture it doesn't run at, you know in the same way you have to optimize the game for the console that doesn't always mean downgrading it just means you have to make it run differently and use different means to take advantage of different consoles in different ways uh, which i think is really neat what i have played in the beginning of rhyme and I, I you know i do have it on ps4 but i am waiting for the nintendo switch version which means i will have bought this game twice yes that's right but i do want to play it on switch because of the port factor and I'm very excited to get it on there as soon as it does come out so it looks like electronic arts is taking the same route as <laughs> you know Capcom did and I don't know if we should all be happy about this or not like it's the, the reality of the situation on the market right now is that a lot of these companies are basing the success off one of one game as to whether or not they're gonna fully support you know a console now with the Nintendo switch obviously Capcom launched Street Fighter 2 and I was really worried about because I was like man Street Fighter 2 is probably not going to do that well because it's a remake of Street Fighter 2, you know, and if they're hoping for huge success, it probably wouldn't happen. Well, to my surprise and probably your surprise and everyone's surprise, they sold 450,000 plus units of Street Fighter 2 on the Nintendo Switch. Well, it looks like EA is taking the same approach with FIFA 18 and they said FIFA 18 will determine how much they support the Nintendo Switch. So if you're one of those people who want all the EA sports games like Madden and things like that running on the Switch, then I guess what you need to do is cast your vote by purchasing FIFA 18, um, which, you know, I guess it's not so bad because they are a business and businesses have to make money and they have to make sure that the system's viable for their games. But for me, I'm not a huge FIFA guy. I am a really big Madden guy and I'm a really big UFC guy as far as gaming. I love those games and I would love to see UFC brought over. I would love to see Madden brought over, especially the new one. And uh, it's, it's one of those things. I remember when I got Madden for the PlayStation Vita when it first came out, I was like, yeah, Yes, finally a full man game on the go and then I turn it on I was like oh no this is terrible <laughs> like it just wasn't good 
And I know the Nintendo Switch would be capable of so much more. So what I am going to say about this is, although it does anger me a little, that you know I'm like, oh man, do I really need to purchase FIFA 18 in order to have a hope of seeing Madden on here? Is that fair to me as a consumer? Well, at the same time. When asking those questions, I have to understand that they need to know that they can make money. And if it means me casting my vote to have those games in the future, I'm willing to purchase FIFA 18. And I hope that you are too. And it's not like that's a bad game. That's, you know, maybe this is the system that I get into FIFA on, you know, because I can take it with me on a go. Great matches are supposed to run very well and look good. And don't, don't get me wrong, I like it, I'm just not very good at it. And perhaps a little bit of practice and being able to play it on the go. This might be the system where I get into it. So here in 17 days, it looks like Nintendo is going to be at PAX West. And they're set to give a uh, panel there. And it's going to be cool. I, I can't wait to see what comes of that. It's one of those things, which is in Seattle, Washington, obviously. But this is something I don't really know what to expect. But I am excited to see what's announced. I don't know that they'll announce anything. Uh, from what we know, it might just be the mobile app or digital schedule for more. Things like that. I, I, I don't know. But in any case, I, you probably will see Mario Odyssey. And I'm sure that you're going to see... Uh, a few things coming out and hear or at least hear about them in, in this panel it's gonna be really cool I, I love all things nintendo i love hearing about the stories about how they create games i love hearing about the history and i could just sit all day and listen so to end this today it looks like sonic mania which is right now available on the european eShop, and it launches tomorrow in north america it's it's doing very well in reviews it looks like this is a game that has been very well received as you can see here are some of the scores they're extremely high i have i didn't get a chance to get my hands on this one early i will be doing a review on it because this is one that I, I do have a passion for this and I'm excited to see you know what comes of it and how good it really is but looking preemptively at these scores and realizing that you know this is a affordable game at 1999 this is really awesome so I, I'm really excited to play this I can't wait I might go ahead and go get it on the European eShop so I can start today I will do a let's play on it and I think you should go pick it up too because Sonic Mania looks awesome anyway that's gonna do it for the news today thank you guys so much for watching be sure to like and subscribe below if you haven't already and I really appreciate you and we'll see you next time.